Happy birthday, Pamela Anderson. That's right. The blonde bombshell actress who you know from Baywatch is actually an author. And if that's not motivation enough for you to get your book out, I don't know what is. That, and I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer, our regular foray into the wonderful, wild, woolly world of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic tonight is where do you find books? We're all writing them and cranking them out, but how does anyone actually stumble across the crazy things? We have two guests with us, and I will let them introduce themselves. John, you want to start? Sure. My name is John Ward. I am very active on Google+. Plus. I love this platform. I manage two communities here, um, the Writers Discussion Group and the Urban Fantasy Fans. And um, that's about it for me for right now. Mike? I'm Mike Reeves McMillan. I'm an indie author and also a reviewer. And I'm also uh, on Google Plus quite a bit. That's why I like you gentlemen so much. <clears throat> and you're very right. succinct. What are you drinking? It's the middle of the day for me here in New Zealand, so uh, I just have a glass of water. Wait a minute. I've known New Zealanders, and that being the middle of the day really doesn't impede their ability to drink, but maybe you're special. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> that's not water. Oh, right, water. <laughs> yes. John? I am drinking Red Bull. Huh. Well, you guys can have to We will kind of draw it down. Jeffrey? <laughs> Uh, I have a Lugene milk chocolate stout. Tasty, tasty. A little desserty, but uh, always a winner. And I'll Tanilla Porter it up again this evening by Knee Deep. Very nice, easy drinking Porter. And now the beer is out of the way. We shall talk about the books. Jeff. Oh, I've got the first question. Okay, well, back on where this topic came up. So I had, I was talking to an author who did not seem to believe that any of the uh, you know, his sales copy, his book cover, any of those things have any impact on someone finding his book. And I pointed out, well, maybe if your mom already knows a link to your book and is going to buy it, they don't care. But if someone is browsing a book, you know, looking for something new to read and stumble across it, that's going to make a poor impression. So I asked him, how do people find your books? And he said he had no earthly idea. As an author, he had no idea how people found new books to read. So I figured that would be a fantastic topic. Um, I know for me, I guess I, I'll, I'll kick that off. Most of it comes from recommendations. Um, I rarely go, go browsing. Um, so I guess for me, it depends a lot on who I know and who wants to uh, you know, impart their wisdom on me. But I haven't been reading as much as I should. So John, where do you find new stuff to read? Um. A lot of different places. I actually do browse sometimes. Um, I'll just search through Amazon's categories looking for something to catch my eye. Um, a great source for me has been the um, Urban Fantasy Fans community that I started. Um, we have just over 600 members there and since I've started that and our focus on that in that community is just on being a consumer of media. We talk about books, movies, TV shows, anything that deals with that genre. and um, but the membership there has recommended several books to me and authors that I never would have found if it hadn't been for them. Um, I can go on, but... Um, so you've really, you've cultivated or you've discovered a place that acts as your discovery engine for you. You let the wisdom of the crowds bubble up to the top. Yeah, um, okay. very Thanks. much so. Mike, what about you? Well, recommendations, of course, is huge. Um, I hang out with a lot of other authors on the plus and I look at their books. I look at the books that they enjoy. I'm also um, connected to a lot of them and a lot of other people on Goodreads and I look at what my friends on Goodreads are reading. Mm -hmm. Goodreads own recommendation engine I haven't found that great. It mostly recommends mid-list titles and I don't generally enjoy mid-list titles that much. 
Hmm. But um, I've found Amazon's recommendation engine reasonably good in terms of people who bought this book also bought. I've found some good ones that way. Um, browsing the blogs, um, podcasts, I quite often listen to interviews with authors. Have you ever noticed that authors are often a lot more interesting than their books, though? I'll quite often listen to a podcast and think, this sounds like a really interesting author. I'd like to read their book. Yeah. And then I, I look at the book and it's really not that great. <laughs> but another way that I've started getting uh, discovering books is that I have become part of a reviewing site, which means that people send books to me and ask me to review them and, um, and in fact, give them to me. So um, that while, while 80 to 90 percent of them are not to my taste, um, there is that 10 percent that are actually decent books that I wouldn't otherwise have come across. I was going to ask if that was a something you found beneficial or as a personal form of penance to just ask people to send you their books. Because back to your, earlier, to your earlier point about authors being more interesting than their books, um, listening to podcasts to me seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy because an author who has a lot of interesting things to say that says, wow, in addition to writing a book, I'm going to do a podcast is going to be interesting. Most authors that, you know, here's my book and then I talk to them, I'm like, wow, not so sure that that person's actually more interesting than their book. <laughs> That's true. Maybe I'm hanging around with the wrong, wrong authors. It's probably, it's probably the crowd mm. that Mike travels indefinitely. But Mike, I want to go back to you for a moment here because you're an author. You've got several books that are, that are published. I know that. Do you think about this topic when you are figuring out your cover, your title, your whatever? Do you know that you need to do something to, to get discovered? And is it something you actively think about or do you just put it out and hope? Um, I do think about it. Um, mostly what I think about is trying to make sure that the blurb and the cover and the sample and the title and the rest of it don't put people off more than that they actively attract people. Um, I know that when I'm browsing, a bad cover is going to put me off, a bad blurb is going to put me off, but I don't find things based on their covers and their blurbs. Right. I don't you, see those until I've discovered them book, some other you way. You judge a book by their cover or their blur, but that's not what you're using primarily as the as discovery engine. John, a, a quick question for you, then I'll let Jeff get a, something in here as well. So I, I know that with the two communities that you run, uh, one of the things that you deal with, like I deal with, is that whole self-promotional thing. Um, do you think it's okay for authors to use the communities that you run or, or other sorts of social media outlets to kind of help spark that discovery? And, and assuming that there's a yes or a no in there, how can they do it without pissing people like you and me off? Some communities are fine with you self-promoting there. If that's the case, then knock, knock yourself out. Um, the communities I run, we don't allow that and um, in either one. Now, but I think that 99% of the authors on Google Plus and probably in, on other platforms as well completely ignore and totally miss the power of their personal profile page. Um, if you can, I think you should be a member of a community, post interesting, compelling content, be very interesting and be very active there because it will raise your profile and cause people to circle your personal page. Once you've got that connection with them, then you can start cultivating relationship with them and make the announcements like, hey, I just released a new book or whatever. Um, I don't, I'm not convinced that that will lead to sales, but it will lead people to at least give your book a chance. It'll get them to go to that page and read your product description, look at your cover, maybe check out the sample, which I think is probably 90% of making a sale. If you can get them that far along, as long as you don't blow those areas, then getting the click that buy it now button, it's not as big of a hurdle as if it is if they've never heard of you before. So it sounds a little bit like you have some defensive work there, like Mike. It's some of the content you put around it isn't necessarily there to sell it, but to make sure if somebody comes across it, they're not put off. 
you're not going to come across your book and go, I don't even know what that is. is. That a squid? What is it doing to that mushroom? You know, you, you want good material there so you're not scaring anyone away. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, so it, I, is, a, is, is a key thing for authors to understand is be, because there are so many different avenues out there by which people can discover your book, and the fact that there are literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands that we're into already of new books published every single day, you just can't hope, you know, you, if you take the sea anemone reproduction cycle is, as your tactic, you're probably not going to do so well. You know, release a few million spores out and see exactly what happens. Yeah, that's not a good idea. It's best to be kind of become really a human and do something interesting and unique. Uh, I'm curious for either of you guys, whichever one thinks they can answer this, um, is there a new site? We talked about Goodreads. We talked about Amazon.com. We talked about Google Plus and blogs and podcasts. But is there something new that you're aware of that's coming out to where authors can kind of make a splash? Because it's important to be there if you can be that – it's big or a small fish in a really, really tiny pond is a lot easier. Something like that exists that you're aware of. I've heard good things about BookBub. Um, it's a paid advertisement site, but mm -hmm. they have a very well curated uh, mailing list from what I understand. And um, apparently they're choosy about which ads are, they accept. So just sending them some money doesn't mean that your book is going to get picked. And that was BookBub, right? Yeah. Book yes, that's right. Okay. Mike, you got anything? Well, uh, since you're not going to, I'll plug Podio Books. It's not a new <laughs> site, but uh, it is where I found a lot of the indie fiction that I enjoy. Um, I curate a page called Indie Books Worth Reading, and about a third of the books on that page I found through Podio Books. Right on. Um, there's also there are also a couple of sites now if you're a reviewer which you can sign up to and you get um, advanced reader copies of both indie and trad pub um, titles. I have to say that my experience has been that they tend to be three star ones, but yeah. um, those sites do exist. Excellent. Excellent. Good to know. So for the patiobooks.com plug, Mike, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and just swipe that right there. Awesome. So you're paid now. And if, if anyone didn't get the credit card number, I'll freeze frame that in the video I put up later. <laughs> so I can grab that. Not enough to put four so, fingers over the fingers. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So quick uh, final question for you two gents. For On the flip side of it, for an author who wants his book to be discovered, what would you say are the the number one thing to do and the number one thing to not worry about? We haven't even talked about like paid advertising or you know a million other things. So whether we talked about it or not, what should an author do? What should they avoid? I I've actually had avoid. The, Sorry, go ahead. I've had the opposite experience of what Mike describes as far as um, authors being more interested, more interesting during a podio or a podcast or what have you. Um, I found several authors whose books I have enjoyed because of they've written an article on something that interested me or participated in a podcast, what have you. Um, if you're able to deliver great content, then um, I'm going to check out your, what the other things that you're offering and assuming that, you know, it's in my area of interest, then I'll give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, so I've one, had, good, one bad thing. Go ahead, Mike. I've had hits and misses with, that I've um, a lot of the people who are producing great blogs or great podcasts, their writing is to me kind of mediocre. But there are some of them that are producing great stuff in both areas. Um, Lindsay Baraka being one of the examples, I found her blog first and um, was impressed by what I saw and went and read her book, um, and it was very good. But there are other well known bloggers, well known podcasters whose fiction just doesn't quite cut it for me. Yeah, that, that is true. And I think you're both saying, you know, be good, be tried at various things and whatever. Well, gents, we're, we're out of time for this one, but um, so I want to thank both of you for being on the program with us today on this crazy freestyle edition of the Books of Your Hangout. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. 
All right, gentlemen, so one of the things we talked about for those of you listening out there was how fantastic Google Plus is, a discovery tool. Hmm, if only there were a book coming out about how authors could leverage Google Plus to build a really kick-ass platform. Oh, wait, there is. It's not out yet, but uh, give us a couple of weeks and we'll have that finished, assuming I don't kill Jeff for his initial technical edits on my master. Peace. Anyhow, uh, some of the things we talked about today, those will be in our show notes. You can check out the show notes of this program at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help indie authors navigate this crazy world of indie publishing. For Jeff Moriarty, my name is Evo Terra. Thanks for watching the show.